Hello, I'm Christine, and this is Christine Says A Lot. This is where I talk about making a handmade wardrobe for me and for my family. Today I'm going to be talking about my plans for 2023 and doing a wrap up of my Make Nine Challenge for 2022. Now I'm going to start off with my Make Nine wrap up. Today I'm wearing the first item I completed for the Make Nine Challenge, and that's the Jarra Sweater by Megan Nielsen. Like several of my Make Nine items, I like the Jarra Sweater enough to make multiples. I made three of the Jarra Sweaters, two for me, one for my sister. I did them all in version one, or A, I believe, because that's the one that appealed the most to me and to how I would wear the sweater. I love the style on this for several reasons. I like the loose boxy fit of the sweater combined with this dropped shoulder. You might be able to see the seam right here and how the sleeves are a little more narrow in proportion to the body of the sweater. I did add about an inch to the length of the bodice this is a little more of a cropped sweater. I'm 5'4", but I wanted to add a little bit of length so that if I was not wearing something high-waisted, I would not get a flash of skin and get a little cold. Because if I am wearing a sweater, or a sweatshirt as we call it in the US, it's because I want to stay warm and cuddly. So this is how it looks with the added length. In this particular version, I used ribbing for the neckband and for the waistband. I just turned the sleeves under and used a twin needle to sew down the sleeve. It was simple, it was quick, and I really do like this. On two of the other versions, I think I used the same fabric for the neckband and the waistband and it worked out fine. This neck opening is wide enough. I have no trouble getting it on over my head. Now, I will say because this neck opening is a little bit wider, I don't really love the look of wearing a t-shirt underneath the sweater and seeing a little bit different color fabric underneath. It, to me, it doesn't look as nice as just wearing this standalone or wearing a cami or tank top underneath. So I consider my first sew a big success. The next completed item on my list, I believe I also completed in January of 2022, was the Nico Top by True Bias. I think I sewed about three versions before I was really happy with my results. And that was strictly me, nothing to do with the pattern. I realized I needed to sew the size based on my upper bust measurement, which for me was a size 18. And then I did a full bust adjustment for knit garment and I used instructions from Cashmerette's book, Ahead of the Curve, and also a tutorial that Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery had posted on her website. And I was really happy with the result. I've been wearing that a lot lately and it's in the wash, so I'm just gonna insert a photo of my Nico top. The next up on my list of what I completed in 2022 from my Make Nine is the Cuff Top by the Assembly Line. Now this is the first version that I sewed and I sewed it in this beautiful, bright, cheerful fabric that is polyester. So unfortunately, I don't reach for this top a lot just because of the fabric choice. I did put on a really cute vintage button for my Aunt Mary Lou's button jar. I wear it some, but I just can't wear it when it's really hot out because it just doesn't breathe. I did sew another version that I absolutely love, and in fact, it is in the wash right now. I'll insert a photo of me wearing it. And I sewed that using a Robert Kaufman cotton lawn, 
and I get a lot of wear out of that. Next on my Make Mine list was I wanted to find a tried and true skirt pattern. I love to wear dresses and skirts and I wanted to find a skirt pattern that I would want to make over and over again and I found it in the Evelyn skirt. What I love about this skirt is the style. It is sewn with several panels, so it's not just a simple elasticated skirt. It has a slit. Now, on my second version, I did move the slit. How it is sewn right out of the pack is just way too high of a slit for my preference. So I moved the slit down, and I'm super happy with both the length and the style of this skirt. I do plan to make more, and I'm going to insert a photo of me wearing it. I got a ton of wear out of this skirt, and I want to make more. So the next Make 9 item I attempted, I didn't complete. I did make a toile and made note of what I needed to adjust, and that was for the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. I do believe I will revisit this pattern. I ended up having to reprint the pattern because I cut straight into it. I cut a size too big, and what I needed to do was go down a size and do a full bust adjustment, and then I think I would have had a great fit. So I believe I'll be revisiting this, but I did not complete it. So the other pattern that is on the partially finished list is the Romy Dress by Sew House 7. I have sewn the raglan top, loved the top, and thought I would really like a Romy Dress in my wardrobe, which is why I put it on the Make 9 list, and I just didn't get around to making it until December. I thought this would be a great, quick Christmas dress to make up, and I completed the bodice. I just needed to do the skirt, add it, hem it, and I would be done. But I succumbed to the pressure of Christmas, and I had a lot of Christmas sewing that I needed to make. And I decided I had a choice. I could finish the Romy dress and check it off my Mac 9 list, and then be a little more stressed in completing all the matching Hudson pants I was making for their grandchildren and Charlie, or I could put the dress aside for a little while and complete all those Hudson pants in a manner that would not create extra stress. You'll be very proud of me. I chose not to be stressed. This is a hobby. I do this because I enjoy it. And I'm not a slave master to the Make 9 list. The Make 9 list is something that I do for myself and I don't wanna do myself in while trying to complete the list. So I will finish the Romy dress in 2023. I still want to have that dress. It's still seasonably appropriate for me to finish it. And I'm looking forward to adding that to my closet, but I can't check it off the 2022 Make 9 Go because I didn't finish it in 2022. I had two items on my list I did not even start. And it's a little surprising to me because these were two patterns I would say I was more desperate or had the biggest desire to sew and biggest desire to add to my wardrobe and I can't tell you why I didn't sew them. I think if I had to guess it's because I was very much sewing in the moment which is how I want this hobby to be and when I would get around to thinking about sewing them I'd have something else on my radar or it wouldn't be the right season in which to sew the version that I wanted to make. I still want to sew the Davenport dress by the Friday Pattern Company and the Patina blouse by the Friday Pattern Company. So the final item on my May 9 challenge list for 2022 is the Ilford jacket by the Friday Pattern Company. 
I had put on my list that I either wanted to make a jacket or an item from Jenny Rushmore's book, Ahead of the Curve. And I chose to make the Ilford jacket as part of my challenge. And this turned out to be my absolute favorite make for me for 2022. There's so many things to love about it. I started in this canvas print from Minerva, which is really fun. I have no regrets in choosing a loudish print for the jacket. I wear it a lot. I get a lot of wear out of it. It's a good weight for the climate here in South Carolina. I have added all kinds of fun pockets. I put this fun red label on this pocket that says not for sale. That came from last year's, or I should say the 2021 Kylie and Machine Advent Calendar. And then I used the page Joanna label saying happiness is handmade because that is real happiness for me. I love wearing this jacket. I put on some jean rivet buttons. I took the time to finish the insides with bias binding. And what can I say? I love the fit. It's very useful. It's very fun. I absolutely love this jacket. It's brought me a lot of joy. So my 2022 Make Nine Challenge finished off very strong with a firm favorite. It got a little chilly in here and I had to put on my Ilford jacket. So that's a wrap up of my Make Nine. I have done a lot of reflecting on my sewing from 2022. January is just the time for that, right? Let me know if you've done some reflecting on how you sewed in 2022. And if there's anything you're going to change in your sewing for 2023. I decided I'm not going to do a Make 9 2023. I might revisit that and do a Make 9 in future years. So instead of doing a Make 9, I want to focus on two things. What I want to increase in my sewing practice to bring me joy and what I might want to decrease so that again, I have more joy in my sewing. Sewing is my hobby, it should be enjoyable and it should be energizing me and not draining me. So right off the cuff, I know what brought me the most joy in 2022 was the sewing community. I love interacting with y'all on YouTube, on Instagram, I love watching other sewing vloggers, the interaction, and joining in. I like to participate. That is not something new to me. It wasn't a new revelation, but it was good to go back and reflect on that and say, what do I want to do more of? I really enjoyed participating on vlogger tours, on sewing challenges, both in hosting a video tutorial and just participating in making with the challenge. Having said that, I am not going to jump on every challenge that comes down the pipe because sometimes I may not have the time to meet the challenge deadlines or the challenge may not be sewing something of particular interest to me. Now, Michelle from Michelle Sews Again does a monthly wrap up of the different sewing challenges going on on Instagram. So if you want to go and find a place to learn about sewing challenges, go check out Michelle's channel. I am going to be participating and I don't care if I win or not. I mean, it's nice to win. I did win a couple of prizes this past year. I just like to play. Did you participate in any sewing challenges in 2022? Let us know which ones you participated in, and I'd love to know if you won a prize. I won prizes in two challenges in 2022. I won an embroidery clock from the Teacher for Summer Challenge run by So Joey, and then I won a pattern from Adam Sews from the challenge that he and Allison 
So Like Dottie ran on A Gift in November. And to be honest, I felt like I really won just by participating in that challenge because I got a lot of my sewing gifts out of the way in November, which made for less stress in December. So I want to participate more in the sewing community, both online and in person. I have scheduled to go to the original sewing and quilting show in Lakeland, Florida. I'm going to be taking several classes and I am so looking forward to that. Both learning and I'm going to be meeting some friends in real life who have been friends for a couple of years in this virtual world. I love the two sides of sewing. We've got the social side here on YouTube, or we can go to sewing groups and sew with others. Sometimes I like the solitary side of sewing. I am very tempted at times to put a sign on my sewing room door that says keep out. I haven't done that because I know it would be totally ignored. All joking aside, I enjoy the social aspect of sewing and I want to do more of that in person. One of the things that brings me a lot of joy is the satisfaction of wearing my knee maids. I love to wear the Silver jacket. I love to wear it for its practical purposes. I love to wear it out. I love to talk about it. That brings me joy to be able to wear the garments I make. I want to bring more of that joy into my life by creating fewer orphan garments. Izzy from Dizzy Quilts and Sews has made a resolution to deal with the orphans that she has in her closet and I would like to take a page from her playbook and do a little bit of that myself. I want to think more when I'm in the making process about what I will put together with whatever I make so that I can wear it more often and then look at my closet and see what I have that is an orphan garment and what I can make so that I would wear that more regularly, get it more in my rotation. That is going to take a little more planning, but I am down for it because I love wearing my me maids. So I've talked about the things I want to increase. There are probably a few things I'd like to decrease. I will say, because I am the boss of me in my sewing, I do what I want when I want most of the time. Sometimes I want too much and it doesn't work with the life balance. The sneaky thing that might divert my sewing that I'm going to definitely be watchful for is sewing samples for work. Now I've put in several proposals for teaching classes and it would be so easy to come home from work, sew up some samples for class instead of sewing what I want to sew for myself and for my family. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. But I will say the classes that I am suggesting are all <laughs> sewing something that I want to sew for me or particularly for the grandchildren. So I do need to watch that because it's very easy to have my sewing tilt more towards the grandchildren and away from me. They have plenty of clothes. I need to remember to sew for myself. So that's the broad brush of my sewing plans or goals for myself in 2023. I want to be mindful of what brings me joy and be mindful of what can distract me from what brings me joy. Let me know what you're doing in 2023. Have you reflected about what went on in 2022 in your sewing room and the direction you want to take in 2023? I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for staying with me on this sewing journey. I love it when we chat in the comment section below. Please do leave me a comment and a like and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Bye.